This video will cover scientific notation. We'll first begin with looking at powers of 10. To the far left, you'll see 10, or the base 10, raised to the exponent, the power. The next column, E notation, is what you'll see in a calculator or in a computer. And the decimal equivalent, or the long form, is the actual number, which is represented by the base 10 and the exponential. And the prefix is part of a word that's used in the metric system, which we'll cover in another video. And then there's the symbol for that prefix. But in this video, we're going to focus on scientific notation and the magnitude of the exponential component. We could say that positive exponentials produce numbers that are between 1 and positive infinity. In other words, big numbers. We could emphasize this by highlighting the number line between 1 and positive infinity. So that's for positive exponents. On the other hand, negative exponents produce small numbers we could say that negative exponentials produce numbers between 0 and 1. In other words, we could say that they're decimal numbers, real small numbers. Not negative numbers, but really small numbers, as you can see here. So we make the association. Negative exponentials produce real puny numbers, and positive exponentials produce large numbers. Now let's take a look at the format of scientific notation and some examples. There's a coefficient which is multiplied by the exponential. The coefficient needs to meet a specific criteria and that is it can be equal to 1 but it must be less than 10. So simply put between 1 and 10, but it can equal 1. So here are some examples. I included two more examples that are not considered uh, scientific notation. They are, of course, legitimate numbers, but they don't meet the scientific notation format because the coefficient is greater than 10 in this case, and the coefficient here is less than 1. Now I'd like to carry out some examples converting from scientific notation form to numeric form. I included the mathematical operation that effectively goes along with this conversion. Because 6.54 times 10 squared is effectively 6.54 times 100. Realizing that and knowing that 10 squared is really 100, if you think about that, that will allow you to predict the correct direction to move the decimal. Knowing that you're multiplying 6.54 times 100, the outcome should be a pretty large number relative to 6.54. Effectively, you're inflating 6.54 by multiplying it by 100. So the decimal should move to the right. How many places? Two, because the exponential is two. So the decimal needs to be moved two places. But you know it needs to be moved to the right two places because the outcome of this multiplication needs to be a number that's larger than 6.54. The next example, 3.4 times 10 to the 6. 10 to the 6 is a million. It's a huge number. So effectively, 3.4 times a million. If you're proposing to move the decimal place to the left, Think about what a puny number you're going to generate and how that doesn't make magnitudinal 
sense with regard to multiplying 3.4 times a million. Your output, your outcome should be a big number because you're inflating 3.4 by a million. Next example is 9.0 times 10 to the minus fourth. And remember what we covered earlier, negative exponentials are really puny numbers. Negative exponentials produce numbers between 0 and 1. And here we have 0 0.0001 as the associated number to 10 to the minus fourth. So effectively, 9 times 0 0.0001. Well, in this case, you're not inflating 9, you're deflating it. So the decimal sh should move to the left four places. 4 because the exponential is negative 4. A negative exponential produces a small number. So we're multiplying a really small number by 9. So 0 0.0009. Similarly with the next example, 7.00 times 10 to the minus 3. So 7 times 0 0.001. Okay, what makes magnitudinal sense? Well, we're going to deflate 7. If you're proposing to move it to the right, that is not consistent with the fact that you're multiplying 7 times a really puny number. So, knowing that it's a negative exponential, a puny number, we're going to deflate 7, so the, ex the decimal needs to be moved to the left three places. The next example, the decimal needs to move to the right eight places, because we're going to inflate 5.004. Inflate it by eight places, because it's a positive exponential. Similarly with the last example, we're going to inflate 2.02 .02 four places. So we move the decimal to the right four places because we're effectively multiplying by 10,000. Here I'll complete some examples that convert the numeric form to scientific notation form. I highlighted part of the numeric form that needs to be extracted as the coefficient. So in the first example, 540001, all of those numbers need to be extracted and be used in the coefficient. We need to move the decimal a certain number of places in order to satisfy the coefficient criteria. Recall the coefficient needs to be between 1 and 10. So the decimal needs to be moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. Now the question is, is it a positive 5 or a negative 5? Well, what's going to make mathematical sense if the coefficient is 5.40001 times a negative exponential would make sense or a positive exponential would make sense? Well, think about the magnitude of the number we need to reproduce. We need to reproduce a big number. So this mathematical operation needs to yield a pretty big number. So multiplying 5.40001 by a negative exponential would not make magnitudinal sense. So it is a positive 5. Next case, 0.00068. Well, I highlighted 68, so we need to extract the 68 and make that meet the coefficient criteria. It turns out it's going to be 6.8. Well, how many places was the decimal moved for us to get 6.8? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is it going to be a negative or a positive 5? Well, this mathematical operation needs to be equivalent to a puny number. So it needs to be a negative exponential, so it's negative 5. Next example, 
five, seven, eight are the three numbers we're going to key on for the coefficient. And the coefficient is 5.78, beating the coefficient criteria, remember, between 1 and 10. But how many places was the decimal moved? 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, again, what's going to make mathematical magnitudinal sense? Should that exponential be a negative or a positive? Well, if we're going to multiply 5.78 by some number and equal a puny number, the exponential needs to be negative, in this case, negative 7. And similarly with the next example. The coefficient is 4.001, and the exponential needs to be negative, in this case, negative 2. And in the last two examples, the exponential needs to be positive, because effectively we're going to inflate these coefficients. Inflate them back to produce the original numeric form. In this case, 700.21 is equal to 7.0021 times 10 squared, or 100. And the last one, 8.600125 times 10,000 positive exponential would produce 86,001.25.